we're going to talk about something that you can actually take as a suggestion, but also it's just how life is and how we use that in side of our marketing strategy and marketing plan. And this is more about just how you behave, how people perceive you. And it all has to do with trust. Just like in real life, in relationships, we need to build trust in order to have really great relationships, right? And when that trust is broken, it hurts your relationship just as it can your friendship, your marriage, your, um, you know, with a partner, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship we're talking about. When we're talking about marketing, the same goes for marketing and how customers and clients build a relationship with us and get to like, know, and trust us. And when you can build a brand, a business, whether you are an entrepreneur, a small business owner, you have a team, really doesn't matter who you are. Building trust with your audience, with your ideal clients is really what it's all about and is what's going to bring those sales, that revenue to you so that you can make a bigger impact to those that you can serve. So I want to share with you today three very simple types of content that you should include in your social media marketing, but really in your digital marketing and just marketing in general in order to help increase the trust factor that your audience, that your ideal clients have with you. And what this does, like I said, is the end game of this is that with a higher trust in your brand, in your business, in the solutions that you can provide, you will see that you will gain more clients, you will have higher revenue and higher profits. So if you are brand new to either my personal profile over on FB or on Stylishly Branded, Hype Media, or maybe even on LinkedIn, I want to personally welcome you. My name is Gina Tassinelli, and I am the owner and founder of Hype Media and Stylishly Branded. We are a social media marketing agency, and we work with established business owners, experts, entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants to ignite your influence on social media so that you can show up in a way that's authentic and builds connections with your ideal clients and moves them into a place where they want to say yes to your offers. And with that said, when we are building a marketing strategy, a marketing plan, we want to really think about how we can build and elevate that trust factor with our audience. So we do this by providing three types of content. And you can do this in your own marketing plan, in your own marketing strategy, and then the plan that supports that marketing strategy which should include a content strategy. I'd love to hear from you. Do you have currently a content plan that you follow that keeps you consistent or keeps your business consistent? And if you do, do you delegate that to somebody or is it just you doing it all? Okay, so say yes to content or no to content. And then let me know, say yes to delegating or no, I don't delegate. I'm curious and don't be shy. If you have any questions while I'm on, or even if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to drop them down below. I always come back and I answer everyone's questions. All right. So let's start with the first type of content that can really ignite, really elevate the trust factor, that building of the know, like, and trust that you have with your audience and your ideal clients. And the first one is, corroboration okay and this is where you work with people to in a sense kind of be like brand there's a few different ways that you can think about it but one way in a sense is to think of people or work with people that can be brand ambassadors for you that align with your message that believe in your services that believe in what you are marketing and are there for you to support you to you know give you that love on social media to share your content um the best type of i call them well this actually comes from one of my coaches but power partners in a sense is going to be somebody that you can collaborate that is also an expert um but they 
support your audience in some way, but they're not a direct competitor, right? And so you want to find industry experts or authoritative figures that will support what it is that you're marketing. Ask them to share a quote of yours. Ask them to endorse your product. Ask them if, if they can interview you on their podcast, on their Facebook page, on their LinkedIn, wherever that is, on YouTube. That's one type of person to collaborate with. Another type are people that have witnessed what solutions you bring to the table. And so these could be your clients, or they could be even friends or networking peers or people in the same industry that you're in that have witnessed the success that you have provided to somebody else, right? They've witnessed those results, those benefits that you bring to the table, the transformations that you are bringing to the table to others. The second type of content that works really well with building your trust with your audience is anything that is documented okay so one way to do this is by sharing stories sharing experiences whether that is case studies or reviews or testimonials but also interviews right so interviewing past clients current clients um, people that you have collaborated with in the past those would be stories so you're telling a story they are telling a story and they are asserting the facts and the figures behind that story that represent what it is that you offer the second type of documentation would be actual documentation. So that would be facts, um, infographics, you know, audits, statistics, explainer videos, case studies also, anywhere awards, things like that, certifications. Those are great ways to give that trust factor, to build that trust factor. And the more that you can impact through factual documentation like that, the higher and the faster that trust factor builds. Okay. And then the third type of content that you should include in your content strategy to help build that trust factor with your audience, with your ideal clients. This one is actually one of my favorites. It's educating, educating your audience, educating your ideal clients. And so this can be done a few different ways. I'm going to share a couple, but I'm also going to share with you some questions to ask yourself when you are putting out this information. So the first way is by educating with information. Okay. So as an expert, you, I'm sure are, you know, staying on top of your industry trends. Um, you have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with your customers and experiences, right? So you want to share this information. You want to share what's working for others, what's not working for others. And your job really is to support your ideal clients, your customers, your audience with information and advice. The second type is by coaching or consulting. And this is a more hands-on approach. Um, but by using your own experiences, your own skills, you're able to coach others to do the same, be a guide or consult them. And this would be by including things like step-by-step -step guides, tutorials, um, templates, free audits, you know, little bite-sized pieces of an experience of working with you, but also one-on-one -on -one coaching, coaching programs, masterminds, things like that. Now, there are some questions that I feel are really important to ask yourself as you are putting this type of content out there for informational, educational purposes. And this is a great way, honestly, to kickstart a content strategy. It's a very simple way because you know all the answers to this. So it's not like when you're putting content out there, the purpose of that content is to have bite-sized pieces of the solution, but without actually giving away the solution, because that's why you want people to work with you. But you want those bite-sized pieces, those like crumbles, bread crumbles, that when they're added up all together, they make that slice of bread. And that slice of bread is your solution. And so we want to answer a few questions when we are putting content out there. The first one is think about what makes people hesitate before they actually purchase. So think about objections, 
right? Like, what are the things that they're saying to you? Are they thinking, you know, for example, if you're a health coach, are they thinking, why do I need a health coach when I can just go on the internet or watch YouTube videos to find out, you know, the best diet for me or um, the best way to to a fitness plan um, for my health goals. So you wanna squash or squash, I like to say squash, those objections with the opposite and the opposite to those objections. So your answer to those objections should be your part of your content. Um, the other question to ask is, what are the most common questions that people ask you? So frequently asked questions. So one way that we help clients to really start kind of brainstorming for us as an agency, but even when I work with them um, in a group setting inside of my high level mastermind is I will ask, write down or, you know, please, if you could write down 10 to 20 questions that you get asked the most by leads, you know, whether you're on maybe with a prospect on a sales call, your past clients, current clients frequently ask questions, write those down and then write the answers to those. The answers to those can help you build that content that will help build a trust factor. You also want to ask yourself, what are things that people often most misunderstand about your business and industry? right? So if you are a coach, what are things that people misunderstand about coaches? And put those out there. That's going to build that trust factor because you're talking about things that people don't typically talk about, right? They're not those obvious things that people put out there. And then the last one, which I already kind of touched on is what are the objections? What are those main objections that people have about your business? All right. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, just uh, drop them down below. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed this short training. Bye guys.